Alex Bonjean, CEO of Vision Marine Technologies, is here with us to talk about electric boats. We know about electric vehicles, we know about the industry, but what do we know about the marine industry and how it's transforming today? Alex, it's your first time on Kiko. Welcome. Thank you, David, for having me. The boating industry is something we don't talk about very often on the show. In fact, I think this is the very first time. This is a this is an industry that's very interesting. It's it's changing very quickly, and it's it's changing in a way that some people might not have expected initially. Thanks in part to industries like yours making electric motors. Tell us about your company and what it is that you do. Vision Marine Technology is actually building boats since 1995. Electric boats worldwide. Uh, but since 2015, we're working on a development project who's the outboard today, the Emotion 180, uh, the world's uh, most powerful electric outboard. So now we are actually providing a powerful technology for uh, all the uh, marine industry, especially boats between 18 to 29 feet, single or twin application. Mm -hmm. A pretty quiet uh, system and uh, for the all, whole marine industry. Why is it important to have electric motors for boats? So we know about cars being electric. Consumers can benefit from, you know, quieter motors, uh, less fuel costs, perhaps less maintenance costs. And some would argue electric vehicles are better for the environment. What about for boats? What are the benefits of electric boats versus traditional boats? There's a lot of benefits, especially with the uh, new uh, the cities and the uh, some countries are banning ice engine outboards uh, as we speak. And it will actually, those uh, many other cities will embrace um, that type of uh, action. Um, a nice engine outboard produces a ton of hydrocarbons and pollution in the waterways. Uh, we don't actually uh, have any pollution made by our system when it's being used. Uh, instead of burning $100 of fuel in a few hours, it will probably cost you less than $4, depending where you are on the planet, of electricity. Uh, it's pretty clean. It's quiet. The maintenance is reduced by 90% because we've got much less moving parts than the regular ice engine outboard. Yeah. So, and you told uh, me offline, your company doesn't just produce boats. You don't just make boats. You make the technology behind electric boats and you're trying to expand your company to service many different parts of the marine industry. Tell us about that. Yeah, we actually uh, produce our own outboard system. It's a complete plug and play called the Emotion 180. So it's a powerful 180 horsepower, a screen, a controller, a plug and play system, a battery pack, 63 kilowatt hour, uh, and an inboard charger. So you could, pro you could purchase a brand new pontoon today equipped with our technology fishing boat, uh, a center console, a bow rider for your boat, uh, for your family, uh, but it will be equipped instead of a Mercury or Yamaha, it will be equipped with our Emotion 180 horsepower outboard. Okay. If you look at the different types of boats uh, on, the, on the ocean today, we've got recreational boats, which I know you sell, we've got fishing boats, we've got industrial boats, you know, uh, all the way up to the cargo ships. Which of these segments do you think will have the fastest demand, growing demand for electric motors? We are feeling a huge demand from uh, the um, rear traditional boaters. Um, more than 320,000 outboards were sold to that industry at uh, that segment of the market uh, last year. And we're targeting 1% of that market by 2025. So it will be over 3,000 wow. outboards. Uh, that's, benefit, that's a very good benefit from us. And I'm curious to know uh, your client base around the world. Where, where do you see the strongest demand from the geographic standpoint right now? Um, New England is a very powerful, uh, very great market for us, California as well, uh, all over the U.S., but uh, we also have a lot of interest and uh, discussion with OEMs uh, overseas. Uh, we'll, you'll see and be able to see trial our product in a very near future uh, in America and also overseas. Okay, I understand. Do you, Alex, do you think the military will eventually adopt electric uh, motors on their navies? They are actually testing um, some product. We are exchanging with third parties or providers uh, for uh, marine outboards since many years for the uh, that project. So um, yes, it will. They will probably follow. Um, okay. Yes. So this is this is the way of the future, then, in your opinion. It is the future. Yes. Once okay. you try it, uh, everything's changed. So let, let, let's talk about your recreation of boats. For the consumer, what can we experience in terms of performance, let's say? Let's start with that. 
differences in performance? Uh, first of all, the uh, say the the, the uh, product is more much safer than the ice engine outboard. Uh, finding a recharging station is much easier. Than a recharging station, a power outlet, it's much easier than finding a gas station. And once you're trying using the system, uh, you could feel the torque is twice the torque of an ice engine outboard. Uh, when you do harsh turn, you don't have to uh, accelerate. So those little things change the way you're boating and the uh, social living on the boat is actually much better. You can actually speak with people in the boat. You don't have to yell. Uh, it's more comfortable. Um, you, have to, you have to feel it uh, or test it to, uh, to understand what I'm talking okay. about. We're going to talk about your exhibition in just a minute. Now, going back to uh, the boat itself, what, can we, uh, what about the cost? Is there a difference in the cost between a traditional boat and an electric boat? Yeah, the outboard is about $5,000 more than a regular Mercury or Yamaha outboard. Uh, as the battery pack, yes, it is more expensive than a fuel tank. But over after about 200 hours of use, you're getting to actually priority uh, price. And mm -hmm. by the fact that the battery density is increasing and the price are dropping year by year, uh, by 2024, 2025, we will uh, be close to parity in purchasing a full uh, ice engine outboard with a fuel tank compared to our system. How much money can we expect to save through maintenance and oil every year? You're probably 90% less uh, than the ice engine outboard, so your, your reduction will be about 90%. Just a quick mm -hmm. recap, when you're putting $100 of fuel uh, in our boats, because we did, I'm not proud to say that, but we did, Yes, test some ice engine outboard against the same boat with our technology. So right. about $95 less in expense for the same use with uh, our electric system. Okay, now look, uh, what about safety concerns? I'm not a scientist or an engineer, but uh, some people might say, look, batteries, water, they don't mix. <laughs> How would you respond? Every ice engine outboard has one or even two or three batteries. So uh, basically we are using a different type of connections and uh, grade. So we were using IP67, IP69, and the uh, marine grade of wiring and safety is actually uh, much uh, higher than you get here actually using the ice engine outboard. Than, uh, okay, system. now let's talk about the industry over the last year. We know that, of, of course, the economy was uh, struggling all throughout the last year. We had a good recovery in many sectors. Uh, what about the boating industry? Uh, you know, this is something that uh, not everybody is into, of course, but... Uh, how was demand over the last year since the start of COVID? It was actually very good. Uh, since 2014, we're almost doubling our numbers every year, but this year it's wow. incredible. Uh, we are actually, uh, we did increase production. We actually double our size of production in our facility where we are in Wabriyan, Quebec. And the demand is, is there. Uh, COVID was probably helpful, but the fact that we were providing a product to the world that was not existing, is another add-on to the success of our product. Okay, and uh, Alex, uh, why do you think demand was so strong last year? People are actually looking to fun and safe activities with their family, and boating is actually one of the best one uh, if you are near a waterway. And uh, having your family on your boat and your friend, there's nothing better than that, especially with our system when you can talk to each mm -hmm. other and you don't have to uh, have a heavy maintenance on those systems. Interesting. And, you know, the economy is opening up now. Of course, uh, you and I are both in Montreal where we don't have curfews anymore. People can go out and have more fun. And of course, around the world, the economies are opening up. What do you see demand headed going forward? Um, probably Florida, California. So we're actually aiming to uh, start showcasing our technology in the next weeks as soon as we are allowed to travel. Uh, we can't wait for that. And I uh, got my finger crossed. I wish my government is going to open the customs very soon. <laughs> and uh, did you experience any uh, supply issues with your components? I know the car company had chip shortages, for example. Anything similar happened with the boat industry? Yes, we did a bit with some of our chips, uh, but we were actually very well organized by ordering parts eight, ten months ago. So uh, everything's actually up and running perfectly as we speak. Okay. And can you tell us a little bit about the batteries themselves? What kind of batteries do you use? What kinds of metals are behind the batteries? And uh, do you produce the batteries yourself or do you outsource them to another producer? No, we have. We are actually battery agnostic. We have joint ventures with five major battery suppliers with special agreement for production for our system. So um, most of our batteries are DNGVL. The they can be fly. We are actually meeting the most uh, safest 
uh, requirement for the batteries. So we're actually a, a very good source of uh, batteries and we don't feel any shortage. Interesting. And uh, finally, Alex, tell us about the beginning of your company. Were you an engineer by trade? How did you, how did you start this company and why did you decide to uh, uh, start uh, you know, uh, Vision Marine? I'm an electrician by trade and I was an avid boater and I was actually racing on weekends and doing a race with Poker Runs of America with friends. And at some point, uh, I met Mr. Ian Bruce, who's an Olympic designer and also uh, an Olympic sailor. And he designed the laser sailboat, the world's most popular sailboat. And he also designed uh, the Bruce 22, the boat that's in my back of, uh, background. And uh, along the way, he made me change the way I was uh, boating by actually uh, building a fast and safe electric outboard. So uh, 2016, my life changed and I never raced a, a, again with any, any ice engine outboard. So we're working and pushing the product as uh, the outboard we're talking today about. Okay. And, you know, Vision Marine Technologies is a publicly listed company on the NASDAQ. VMAR is the ticker. Before you IPO'd, tell us about the capital raising process. What was the main difficulties in raising money for a niche industry like boating? It was, it was actually pretty simple. Uh, once we are actually able to showcase and put a, in a future investor in one of our boats and let them drive the product and explain them the market or even meet them in a boat show to show them the, uh, the uh, action we had on our product, uh, it was pretty simple. And the IPO was actually uh, something that uh, was pretty easy to do for us. And what's your next step for the company? What's your uh, five-year plan, so to speak? Moving forward, we'd like to get at least 75% of our uh, business under the uh, Emotion outboard, and we will still produce boats uh, to test and showcase our technology, but we want to focus by providing uh, the outboard to the whole marine industry. So I want to have at least uh, six or seven big OEM in the next 12 months using our technology. Uh, we have one now, it's limestone. They are over uh, $2.5 million in outboards. We have other joint venture that will be actually uh, show to the world in the very near future also with other major OEMs. That's, mm -hmm. that's my goal, to showcase it. And you talked about this earlier, but uh, just bring it up again. Your, your exhibition is coming up. Where, where is that? Where can people actually go and, uh, and see your products? We'll be very active on showcasing our product with not our Emotion outboards, but with others OEMs. So you'll be able to see trial a pontoon, a center console, in Maine, in August, September will be Ibex Boat Show Tampa. September will be, uh, excuse, sorry, October will be Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. Then November uh, will be with Brunswick with Carefree Freedom Boat Club Show, a uh, boat show also. So every month we're gonna have boat show for the next 18 months. Excellent, all right. Thank you very much, Alex. It's great talking to you. Welcome to Kiko. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Kiko News. I'm David Lynn. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube.